What if your nervousness got multiplied a thousand times every time you had to do something scary? I had an experience like that and I learned a great lesson on how to calm those fears. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to be better and more confident on camera. So whatever you're doing on camera, really the most important thing is to be prepared so you feel prepared. If you feel prepared, one of my favorite sayings, if you are prepared, you will not fear. And it really is true. Even preparing some of our content, sometimes we're so busy and thinking about the lights, the cameras, making sure the background looks the way that we want to. Uh, the second I sit down in the chair, I realize, wait, I haven't thought about my content enough to get into that headspace. So being prepared is important. And a part of that really is when you're preparing content or a video or a film, make sure it's something you believe in. It is really hard to do any kind of a genuine presentation if it's not really something you believe in or you're just dialing it in. So that preparation might mean if it's a script, if you're acting, we'll talk a little bit about you know acting for narrative as well as presentation skills. If you're an actor, memorize your lines as well as you can, but not to the point where it becomes mechanical. And likewise, if you're presenting on camera here today, I have my bullet points have an outline, be prepared, but again, don't let it get so mechanical or be so attached to the exact words that then you can't just flow in a conversation. Everything about this is about being as natural to hear and to present as possible. And the truth is, if you feel good, or as my kids' principal at their small town high school said to them, if you look good and you feel good, you're gonna play good. That was the principal, and I don't think he majored in English, but it was a great way of saying that same idea. If you feel good and ready, then everything you present will also have that same natural flow. The next thing is to actually be physically comfortable. If your body is sick or tired or uncomfortable, or you wore too tight a pants that day, or anything like that, you're thirsty, your skin's dry, any of those things that are bothering you, then of course you're not gonna be able to present your best material. Make sure that the night before that presentation you, you do dedicate and put your alarm out to make sure you get good sleep, lots of water, that you're well fed, and if you can, make fitness a regular part of your lifestyle because it's gonna give you the mental endurance that goes along with the physical endurance, and frankly, the physical and mental discipline that you're also going to need to be a good presenter. Also, when you're presenting, I'm seated, but you can welcome movement. Don't, don't lock yourself in in any way. You've got to be fluid. So if you're standing, have a comfortable stance from the bottom up, build that up. You're gonna have comfortable feet. Don't lock your knees, don't lock anything, don't lock your shoulders. Let everything be fluid. You need to have that movement because the truth is, if your camera person is using a gimbal or moving, they can't be perfectly still either. And when you're running a camera, a little bit of gentle movement, same thing when you're doing handheld, is a lot better than trying to lock yourself in. One other tip about being fluid and not locking anything is not just your hands, you know, you don't wanna be like this. All of the body language that hints that you're nervous Coming back here to the wide angle, if my hands were like this, then I, I've got these claws, I look terrified. If I'm like this, same thing, um, all of those things. So relaxed shoulders, relaxed hands, allow your hands to move. And there's no tension, you know, I'm not moving rigidly. But something you may not think about is having soft eyes. If you're looking really hard at the camera, Peter Brady style, if you ever watched the Brady Bunch and he would freeze, that's sort of the thing that we would laugh about and joke about in my family is my kids being actors and preparing for auditions. Soft face, soft eyes, don't stare hard into the camera. Just allow your eyes to turn naturally from this camera back over to that one and allow the flow. Uh, sometimes when we're training our clients to use the two camera system, just for about five minutes, they're not sure what to do and they will do something like this or the eyes go first and then the body, or the body goes first and then the eyes. Just relax and think, you've done this, you've all sat at a table before having lunch with people and you talk to this person and then you simply turn to the other. It's all a part of being fluid and relaxed. Number four is give yourself some quiet time. 
When I grew up, I was an equestrian showing horses. And that was one of the best things I actually ever did for learning to be a great filmmaker and director. Here's the thing, whatever your nerves or energy are, your horse will absorb that and multiply it. It was one of the most powerful things I learned. I still kind of get a little emotional thinking about this because at that time as a kid, I'll just be honest with you, it was a very difficult time in my family and horses were kind of my savior. And spending time with this really big animal, thousand pounds that could actually kill me if, if they were upset or scared. Uh, and I saw a lot of wrecks with people when their animal was upset. I had the responsibility to be the leader. I'm on the horse, again, thousand pounds or more, bigger than me. And my responsibility was to be the leader and decision maker and then the horse to go where I wanted. And anytime I was nervous or I brought troubles with me or my concerns or I didn't feel prepared, the horse knew it. And so I had to train myself to learn how to get quiet, even if I was afraid or unsure. It has been one of the most powerful things I've ever learned in my life. So borrowing from that tip, I then trained my kids to learn to do that anytime they were doing a musical performance or they were actors. So we would go down for auditions and the trick would be get quiet. What we would do on our way down, driving from where I live down the mountain into Salt Lake where the actual auditions were, it, it was quiet time. I didn't ask them a bunch of questions. I didn't say, practice your lines with me. I didn't say, make sure you stand up straight. I didn't do anything to bother my kids. They had done their practice. They knew the role as well as they were going to at that point. And we took time to be quiet driving down the mountain. It made all the difference. And then again, when they got on set, same thing. And I sometimes forget to do this for myself. Yesterday, we were doing some filming. We were in a hurry. I didn't take quiet time. Take that time to get in a meditative state, be quiet and think, if I had a thousand pound animal right now next to me, would I be making him nervous? Because the truth is when, again, that physical softness, if you can borrow from this idea, I hope it helps, but think about riding a horse that's nervous. When they do that, every step is more bouncy and then you're stiff and you bounce and then you end up smacking, basically you're smacking off of the, the saddle like this and you're not gonna win any prizes and your horse might end up bucking. So mentally in your life so that you don't get bucked off, take quiet time for everything that you're going to do, especially even if as a director, before you have all those people in front of you that you're supposedly in, char in charge of, or if you're an actor. And again, like I said, it makes me emotional because those horses taught me a lesson that saved my life in many ways. Take time to be quiet, meditate, think about what you're doing. And if it's something that really matters, you're gonna be directed and you're gonna do a great job. Step number five, now that you're ready, be ready to host. Just like I had to be the host or the leader in charge of the horses, um, it, it takes quiet, confident, but kind leadership. Uh, and even if you're the actor or you're the presenter, remember you're hosting someone. Right now, you're my guest. You're my guest here, and I'm hoping that I can provide something that will be helpful for you. This is not in any way for me about being in front of you or performing. And so I know when I'm not ready, I can't give you my best self. The way that I'm gonna be effective and helpful to you is if I remember, welcome to my space, welcome to this channel. Everything here about our channel is about being your ally and helping you. And if I'm not doing that, then I need to go back and take some quiet time and get back in that space. Number six, this is very similar. Just remember that it's not about you. It's all about your audience, your viewer, and what they can get from what you're presenting. That's a short one, just it's not about you. It's about the listener. That allows you to actually care and not fake it. And if you think about it, it's interesting talking about hosting, how many actors end up working in the hospitality field as a, a waiter or a host. It's because that's a natural important thing that they need to know when they walk into the audition room a good actor is not going to feel them, themselves on the line being judged. A good actor, or if you watch American Idol, I've talked about this before, when they come into the room, they bring the warmth with them. Likewise, someone who's nervous and afraid, they bring the nervousness and the uncomfortable awkwardness with them. 
And when they go, it goes with them out of the room. And that's why you can't stop being the presenter, the host, and the, the warmth that comes into the room. Finally, when it does go wrong, just allow for humor. Be ready to laugh at yourself. Uh, even in an audition, there have been times something's gone wrong. Maybe something falls off or you're, you, know, you're, you have a wardrobe malfunction. You drop something. Same thing with a job interview. You knock something off the desk, grab it. I mean, just allow for humor. Everyone's human. The person across the way from you, they've had bad days too. Laugh it off and then just move on. So again, I have two phrases I'll just finish with. There was the one I mentioned, if you're prepared, you will not fear. And then another phrase I was taught as a kid, which is actually biblical, but I think it applies in any sense, which is perfect love will cast out all your fears. In other words, if I care about the person I'm presenting to you, there's no reason for me to be afraid of you on any camera I'm looking at or in any presentation room. And I remembered this every time I have to teach a lesson or speak to large crowds or present on camera. The idea is fear no man, fear no one, because if I'm giving something from the heart, it doesn't matter if you receive it or not. I've already given the gift. I hope you will receive it. I hope you'll come back to this channel because we have a whole team here that is excited about teaching and presenting really helpful things for being on camera, also being a young or new filmmaker, and for those who want to become YouTubers. So go ahead and subscribe, and hopefully this information will be really helpful to you as you grow on camera and professionally in your business, whatever you do.